Yo, what's up YouTube? Today we are talking all things aiming, how to improve, types of aiming, some suggestions, and even some things to do with your emotions. We are going to try to tell you how to go from an amateur to a pro and how much time it may take for you to do so. There's so much to talk about aiming and I hope you're ready for all that, so let's get started right now. First up, what we're going to talk about is going to mostly apply just to the AR, SMG, and shotgun type of fights. Sniping is honestly a different type of aiming and I'm not really going to review that here. In a lot of ways, sniping is similar and even easier than what we're going to discuss. If you can't get the close to medium range aiming down, sniping is just going to come after you master that, so don't worry about that at all. I am a controller player, but the same principles will apply for mouse and keyboard. Just keep that in mind as I am talking about aiming. And of course, if you like this video, hit that like button. I appreciate your support. It means the world to me. Let's now start off with talking about the different types of aiming. First up in the most simple one is strafing. This is basically just side to side movement, left to right, right to left, that kind of thing. This is extremely linear and I don't really honestly recommend strafing too much when you're aiming. Strafing should really only be done to fine tune your movements. If I ever see someone just honestly moving left to right, right to left, this really just triggers to me that they are a less experienced player. For me, strafing is done to kind of fine tune the little bits of movements and aims that I need to do. If I need to move just a hair fraction of my cursor to the right, I will strafe to get my target in line. But really, this pairs up with the next type of aiming, which is just general aiming and leading. This is harder to do and requires more mechanical skill to track enemies, but obviously this is something that you'll need to master if you do want to get your aim down to a pinpoint precision. What you need to be doing is try to predict where the enemies are moving when you are aiming. This happens in the milliseconds, but if you are able to better predict where the enemy is moving, you can stay ahead of where the enemy will be moving, thus making you hit more shots. If you are just following them, you are never going to be able to keep up with them when they make rapid movements to a certain area. This is the key reason why you need to be predicting what they are going to be doing, and this really does come in time when you're playing more. If you play a lot more, you're going to be able to more predict how enemies will move in engagements. When I'm fighting, I'm almost always trying to track enemies, thinking about where they are moving. What would I be doing if I was in their shoes? That kind of thing. Certain weapons have faster bullet speeds than others. A lot of the heavy guns have slower bullet speeds, slower bullet velocities, meaning the heavy gun, you might have to lead more if they are farther away than, say, a light gun. This is also something to keep in mind. So once you are able to kind of more predict where people are moving, and again, this does come with time, you can then combine leading and tracking with strafing. And this allows these two things to kind of go back and forth with each other. You can track people, lead people, and kind of combine that with strafing so you can better track enemies and hit more shots. While I don't like to do strafing too much, one thing it does help with a lot is mimicking movement. And what I mean by this is you are actually kind of mimicking what the enemy player is doing. If you and the enemy player are doing the same type of movements, this means you're going to be able to easily kind of figure out where they are going. This kind of again goes back to where you need to kind of predict what they are doing so you can better track them. And what I mean by this is if they are moving backwards, you are moving forwards. If they're moving left, you're moving left. If they're moving right, you're moving right. This way you're really able to kind of track what they are doing by using your body. And then you can always just leave your cursor in the center of them. You don't need to really kind of pivot and lead them as much. Again, this does come with time, but if you're able to kind of keep that consistent distance, you're really taking a lot of the guesswork out with aiming. You don't need to aim as much, honestly. You can just keep your cursor in the center and put those shots down in range. Of course, this is a perfect scenario where the enemy is keeping the same distance from you. This isn't always going to happen and you're going to have to rely on leading people. You're going to have to rely on strafing when it's appropriate. This really only comes in time with practice, so definitely keep practicing. This leads us into the final type of aiming that I want to discuss, and this is pre-aiming. This is the removal of the brief second to aim down sights. While aiming down sights might only be fractions of a second, honestly, this does account for multiple shots if you have your gun already up when someone comes around a corner. Especially if you're hitting headshots, this could be upwards of 50 plus damage that you're getting if you are pre-aiming. This should really only be done if you are playing a bit more passive or say you're head glitching over a wall where you might have some cover, able to move a bit slower, stand still, that type of thing. I'm a huge fan of pre-aiming with the massive because if someone comes around the corner and I already have the massive up I'm able to hit really good headshots usually this way so that's one scenario where you can be pre-aiming another scenario where you can pre-aim is if you are in a medium range fight say you're looking at where a team is they're hiding behind cover if you're already aiming at them when they come out from cover you're already going to have a bonus where you can hit shots on them because your gun is already up so again pre-aiming does make you kind of hit more consistent shots it does help you a lot it's something that I do recommend a lot of newer players use and something newer players might not be thinking about as much. So just keep that in mind. Secondly, with pre-aiming, it's kind of obvious, but always leave your cursor and reticule at head level or upper chest level. That way you'll always start off aiming at the proper spot rather than aiming above someone's head or at their midsection. This is just something easy to keep in mind. Hopefully you're doing this already. 
Now let's talk about hip firing versus aim down sights. This is one of the biggest thing I find less experienced players have a hard time guessing and don't just realize how to do it or when to do it. Hip firing, honestly, you should be doing a lot more than maybe you even are thinking about. Hip firing in under 10 meters is a great thing to do. And I also find hip firing if you're playing mouse and keyboard is a little bit easier to do than if you are playing controller. This is just the way aiming is on mouse and keyboard over controller. If you are hip firing at less than 10 meters, you're honestly gonna be hitting some solid shots. And if you are a controller, and your sensitivities are a little bit lower you might have a harder time tracking people while aiming down sights if you are in close range battles this is why hip firing is much easier to do at close ranges and why you will probably hit more shots some guns benefit more from hip fires than others something like the alternator and prowler i find are really good at hip firing even the volt too something like the r99 and massive are a little bit better at aiming down sights unless you are very close to the enemies i mean very close as in you're like barrel stuffing them you're very on top of them when it comes to aiming down sights obviously this is something that honestly i always do when i am more than 10 meters away you can hip fire if you are over 10 meters away but again this kind of comes back to whether you're playing controller or mouse and keyboard mouse and keyboard players again i find have an easier time hip firing at farther ranges than say controller and this is honestly because of aim assist when you're on a controller you have aim assist when you're on mouse and keyboard you do not have aim assist which makes hip firing a little bit easier at a little bit further ranges than a controller player so keep that in mind when to hip fire when to aim down sights if you're under 10 meters hip firing honestly is almost always a surefire bet to hit some solid shots so now let's discuss should you be aiming for the body or you should you be aiming for the head it's obviously easier to aim at the midsection but tim of course you're going to do more damage if you hit headshots not necessarily all the time if you're hitting all headshots of course you're going to be doing the most damage well let's be real myself yourself we are not going to be hitting all headshots it's just not realistic the higher you move up the body the more damage you will do at the cost of missing shots so that is something also to keep in mind obviously the more you move up to the body the closer you get to the head the more likely you are to hit headshots this will thus do more damage to enemies in fights making you win more fights my big recommendation is to aim at the upper chest area this is my sweet spot and let's just briefly talk about this every gun has recoil thus if you're going slightly up from the upper chest area you're gonna end up hitting some headshots you won't hit all headshots but you're also gonna be hitting solid body shots because you are aiming center mass so if you're aiming at the upper chest area you'll be getting a mix of body and headshots of course if you can aim for someone's head you should obviously be doing that but let's be real you want to be hitting as many shots as possible the moment you miss shots body or headshots you are going to be doing less damage than the enemy most likely so again my recommendation is to aim at the upper chest area that way you're hitting solid body shots you have most of the center mass to shoot at and your recoil will make you hit some headshots which is great because you will do a little bit more damage than say someone hitting all body shots now let's talk a little bit about your emotions in fights anxiety versus control the more anxiety and nervousness you feel the worse your aim will get it's just a biological fact the more nervous you are the more likely you are to panic in fights the more you are going to miss your shots try your best not to panic and keep a clear mind so you can make the right decisions don't worry though everyone is going to get nervous over certain engagements myself including this is something that you will just have to shake the more you play but if you can address this early on and realize that you are missing shots because you are getting nervous at taking flights or being in fights, this will affect your aim and you can better address this. This is something that you might not even be realizing is affecting your aiming at all. And it is something that you should be addressing. Just remember the worst thing that can happen to you is that you get the queue into another game and it's really not a big deal if you do lose your fights. You definitely don't want to be playing scared. You want to be taking fights. You want to be confident in your ability. You're not going to win every fight. Just have that in mind right off the bat. But be confident about your skills level that way you'll not be scared and you'll be more likely to hit your shots now let's discuss aim training does it work and does it help you my honest answer to this is yes it will help you but only a very small amount if you are new to the game or if you are very experienced then in my opinion aim training will definitely help you aim training in the firing range is a great way to practice different guns and figure out the recoil patterns and what I mean by this is literally just take the gun, take a thousand rounds, put the different barrel stabilizers on them in the firing range and shoot at the bots. This way you can ingrain in your mind how good or how bad some recoils for the guns are. The more you do this, the better you will learn the recoils, which means when you come to a fight, you will be able to incorporate that into your fights. What I find for me that works best, if I'm going to be playing for a long time, I mean four hours plus in one play session, I will try to take 15 minutes before I jump into games and just play with a few different weapons with different recoils. And that way I will kind of tune my aim before I'm even jumping into fightings. This way I'm kind of just prepping myself for engagements. If you are going to be playing only a couple hours a day or not that long at all, 
then I don't recommend aim training at all. Aim training and firing range practice is no substitution for playing in actual games. Playing more time in games will definitely benefit you more than playing just in the firing range. When you're playing in games, you're learning different legends, you're learning map rotations, you are learning how to approach different fights. So just keep all that in mind. If you're playing for a long time, then firing range practice is definitely a good thing to do. If not, skip it and just jump right into matches. That's where you're gonna learn the most about Apex Legends, I have no doubt about that. Now let's discuss sensitivity briefly. Is a lower or higher better sensitivity better? This is a tough question to answer in Battle Royales. In a multiplayer game where you're typically going up 6v6, say like Call of Duty or Halo, lower sensitivity is almost always better because you can aim more precisely. You're not gonna be over aiming or missing shots. But in a battle royale, it's almost critical for you to be able to do like a 180 shoot on someone. So you need to find a healthy balance between high sensitivity and low sensitivity. For me on controller, I hover around the five to six range, five to seven range. It really depends on the player. I don't want my sensitivity to be so high to the point where I am missing aiming at close range fights or at long range fights. But on top of that, again, I don't wanna be so low to the point where I am not able to turn on someone and get shots. I wanna be able to track someone, especially since how fast you can move in Apex Legends. So this is just something to keep in mind. Find what works for you and stick with it. You don't wanna be changing sensitivities too much it's okay for particular days for you to go up one or go up two sensitivities or down two sensitivities but anything more than that if you're adjusting too much too often it's going to affect your aim overall and this is going to be a bad thing for you no doubt about it the last thing I want us to discuss is playtime. And this is not to discourage you guys, but I want to be real with you. And I want you to kind of keep perspective with aiming and improving aiming in video games and shooters. There's an old kind of myth or fact thing that people say you need to put 10,000 hours into something in order to master it. For reference, this is about five years of eight hours a day to get that mastery status. So have you been playing shooters that long? Have you been playing for 10,000 hours of time? Me, myself, I've been playing shooters since I was about six, seven years old and I'm 29 now. So I've been playing for probably 25 years almost of shooters. So I have probably, I don't know, 40,000 hours of shooters because I do play a lot and I've always played a lot. So have you put in the time to become a pro player? On top of this, another comparison, the pro players in Apex Legends, they are streaming the game, they are playing the game, they're playing eight to 12 hours, maybe even 16 hours, maybe more than that a day. So they're putting in 3000 hours a year and they're able to kind of master the game. They have the time to do it. They have the skill to do it. On top of this, they are critically thinking about how their engagements are going. They're not just playing without the ability to improve. They're playing to improve their gameplay and they are thinking about this all the time. They are learning the rotations on maps. They are learning the weapon types. They are mastering the weapon types. They know the difference between when they pick up an alternator with a no barrel and an alternator with a gold barrel. They're going to know exactly how that weapon performs with the different barrels on. And they just kind of learn that because they have played so much. Again, I'm not saying this all to discourage you, but keep perspective about your improvement. I will say it might take 10,000 hours to master something, but you can get 95% of the way there by only playing like a thousand hours or 500 hours, which sounds like a lot, but in the long term of things, it might not be that bad. Just keep perspective about how you are improving. And this was a big thing to keep in mind. Again, critically think about your engagements. How did you mess up your aiming? How did you get your aiming right? Both of these will help you improve and keep doing what you are doing well. You're definitely not doing everything wrong. You just need to improve certain aspects of your game. And the other big thing is playing a couple hours a day or an hour a day is going to improve your ability more than playing eight, 10 hours once a week. So also try to be consistent with your playtime if you can, and this will also help you improve a lot. There are no shortcuts again for aiming. So just practice, 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 play as much as you can. And again, I do actually find playing different shooter games will improve your aim overall, but there's no substitution for just playing in-game matches of Apex Legends. I hope all of this was helpful. If you do like this video, again, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. If you have any other questions about aiming, you can follow me on Twitch or join our community Discord. I answer pretty much all questions on the comments down below as well. And I would love to talk with you guys and chat with you guys. Stick around, guys. We are going to be playing with the community very soon. I'm going to be setting up that in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that as well. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know again in the comments if you have any questions. Until next time, peace out. Let's go. Let's go.